right, man. These cheap Everbuilt things, these doors just don't last, so we're gonna put in a new door. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. Hope all is well, and welcome back to The Shabbin Life. As always, I have absolutely no idea where this clip will end up in videos. Um, I am way behind on, uh, <laughs> on getting some videos out, but I'm ahead on home building, and that's the most important thing. Um, there's a lot going on right now, you know, between finishing up some of the mechanical and some, uh, some of the other stuff coming in, like the doors. So I'm sort of uh, kind of multitasking right now, which normally I like to just finish a project. But uh, building a home, I guess that's not an option. So uh, the doors came in at different times about two weeks ago. The French doors came uh, in about three hours or so away from the build. The um, single front door was delivered up towards where the build is, about maybe 30 minutes away. So getting the French door up here was quite a task. I thought it was going to be at least on like a pallet, and it was just on two runners. So it was definitely a white-knuckle trip up here. Um, but I got it up here. My dad was kind enough to lend a hand, so he drove up uh, the next day and helped me install both doors. And thank God he was here. I don't think I'd have been able to get them in without him, so I appreciate that, Pop. Um, we did a little bit of video footage while we were putting the doors in, but again, it was more important to just pay attention and get the doors in than it was to get a great video, get great video footage. Um, but we did try and set the camera up a little bit and uh, capture us setting both the doors in. So I thought I would just walk up real quick and kind of show you the doors, point out a few things. I didn't really go over like detail video, so as usual, I'll probably just talk you through it and point out some stuff in, in the videos. But uh, we'll walk up real quick and <clears throat> take a look at both doors. We'll go check out the French door first, and then I'll kind of point you guys through. We'll go inside real quick. All right, so it's a little frosty this morning. <laughs> but here's the French doors. I think they turned out really nice. Uh, there's that door we've been waiting for. There's that door.
I had to order this door for a two by four wall, not a two by six. So you'll see there's the pine going around the inside. Actually, it's not pine. Um, it's a, I don't know if it's, it's a specialty wood. So I'm sure it's a little bit harder wood. And uh, I, I think that was a five fourths. I know that sounds weird, but I'm gonna look it up just to double check and I'll drop it in the comments below in order to build the sill out. All right, guys, we're taking the, uh, we're taking the brick molding off of the French door because we need to build the jam out. This is for a four by wall. We're putting it in a six by wall. So um, I wish I'd have done a video specifically on just doing that because it's, there's not many of them online, but um, it wasn't difficult. You basically have to just pop this brick molding off, which came off really easy. And then it literally is an exact almost two inch difference, obviously between the two by four and two by six wall. So you're just building out this jam and then you're basically putting the brick molding back on. The tread needs to be extension, needs to be extended. The, the sill needs to be extended from a two by four sill to a two by six sill. And uh, fortunately there's a couple of companies that sell that and I'll drop a link to the one that I purchased as well. I think I got it uh, through Amazon, but it's, it snapped on perfect and I only had to cut maybe three inches off. And it was really tight, lined up really well, looks like it was meant to be. And funny enough, the MMI door that is was ordered for the the front door which was ordered as a two by six you know six and nine sixteenths or whatever um you know jam that actually came with the right sill but it looks like there's just an extension on that too so i wonder if there's actually six inch sills on you know any of the doors or if they just put that extension but um like i said door came out really nice i know my wife is going to be super excited she hasn't been up here you know inside to see the windows or the door um you know, so I know that she'll be stoked, but um, I did the, uh, you know, just to walk you guys through real quick, I did the same type of setup as I did for the windows, which was, you know, cut the house wrap across the top, cut the house wrap across the bottom, straight down the center, wrap it around, staple it to the, um, the jams, then tape it off with some Tyvek tape. And then the only thing that I different between the windows and the door was, you know, obviously we wanted a little bit, a little bit better, um, uh, you know sill pan so what it is oops, sorry phil <laughs> so what i did here was i used the flex wrap the dupont flex wrap as my actual sill pan but what i what i laid was a piece of dupont flashing tape in the like up about eight inches on each side and all the way across right along the floor right to the edge of the uh, deck frame and uh you know or the uh, subfloor frame and then, so that basically sits flush right along the bottom and up the jams about six or eight inches. Then I cut the flex wrap about 16 inches up each side and then did the same I did for the windows where it's three inches on, th you know, three inches off. And then it's wrapped over and, you know, all that good stuff. And then you'll see the, br the brown flashing underneath. Um, I didn't want to build a metal sill pan for a couple of reasons, just didn't really want to. <laughs> and they're impossible to get right now, as with everything else. But really what I was concerned about mostly was my the deck. You know, obviously we're gonna be adding a deck onto this house. And really what I cared most about was to make sure that there was step flashing for the ledger board flashing. So really that brown flashing, although it goes all the way across the sill and is, you know, basically, um, you know, bonded to the flex wrap and the DuPont flashing tape, you know, really that's just stepped over so that I have something to slip the flashing under for the deck ledger. And I did that under the front door as well. Hopefully that will work out and not bite me in the butt in the background, but pretty excited. And then I just used the same OSI that I used on the windows to, to seal all the way around the doors. The brick molding has a little channel behind it. Um, as much as you'll watch, you know, listen, there's a million ways to put doors in. Um, you know, you do it however you feel comfortable, but you know, a lot of the manufacturers or installs will say, you know, silicone behind the brick mold, which is perfectly fine, I guess. But there's a channel behind that brick mold. And I kept thinking that that channel's got to be for water drainage because it runs all the way out the bottom, you know, and obviously you're not going to seal the bottoms of the doors. That way you can let any water that gets in the, th you know, behind the threshold get out. So I actually left behind the brick molding, not siliconed and silicone the edges. You know, I'm not too concerned because the doors water tight and, you know, drip cap and you know everything's done as far as the flashing tape at the top but I really just did a you know hefty job going around the brick molding to the house wrap and that OSI is great so I'm, I'm really hoping for no issues you know it it poured the day after and uh 
there was no water getting in, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. <clears throat> but yeah, that's the French door, and we'll take a quick walk inside. But you can also see the, the jam extension right there. And it's not too difficult. I mean, I siliconed around the bottom, <clears throat> you know, the other day. But it really went on nice. And if you leave the brick molding intact, you know, as far as the uh, mitered corners, you can put it right back on and the reveal is exactly the same. The only thing that you really have to do after you install the door is set the pins for the um, stationary door, which wasn't difficult either. Um, I think I videotaped a little bit of that as well. But we'll walk inside real quick. All right. So you can see I'm starting to piece together some of the plumbing pumps downstairs. I'm going to try and videotape that today. <clears throat> but yeah, door went in real nice. Like I said, um, everything fit square. I mean, it needed to be shimmed as pretty much every door does, but you know, nothing super crazy. Slid in place really well. And you know, all, all my pop and I had to do was pretty much shim it up to make it nice and plumb and you know, make sure everything was nice and tight and then screw it in there. So I, I sort of made some shims and then obviously just some regular shims. Went back and cut them off yesterday when I was all done. Don't think I videoed any of that. And then again, OSI along the bottom <clears throat> to seal the bottom of the door at the subfloor. But yeah. The door sits real nice, so I know it's plumb and level, which is cool. And then all you do for the stationary door is push and they pop down. And then down here you push. Ooh. Push and pull up. And then that door opens as well. Got a nice wide open doorway. Sorry, no, not the best camera. <laughs> Not the best camera footage. These are the directions to put the uh, the pins in are really easy. It's back a seven eighths or seven eighths, and they give you the markers to go on the inside, and it worked out well. I wanted to make the door, the uh, stationary door, nice and tight. <clears throat> that way, I knew when the uh, when the, you know, this left in swing door shut, everything would be nice and sealed. And, and it worked out really well. I know I say that all the time, sorry. But yeah. All right, so that's the gelled wind door, and it's a 72 by 80 door. So there's the front door, and this door was obviously came for the 2x6 wall, didn't have to do any of those jam extensions, which was great. And this one went in really easy, too. I think the, uh, the biggest deal is just the weight and kind of the, you know, them being a little cumbersome, but other than that, um, I meant to mention on the other door too, um, underneath the, uh, you know, like I mentioned that I put the flashing down there under, then on top of the flashing, obviously I ran beat, you know, lines of OSI on both doors, three lines of OSI, uh, silicone across the uh, threshold or the sill pan or whatever you want to call it before I set the door in as well. And that was for the French door too, but same deal here, you know, the Tyve or the DuPont flashing, uh, tape underneath then the flex wrap as the sill pan the brown flashing over top to create a step flashing for the deck board uh, the deck ledger flashing and then uh, through the door and OSI again Along the door and not on the bottom just to let any water come out But yeah excited to have doors in man It's been a long time coming And then I just purchased some inexpensive quick set handle sets and locks so that I can put them on for now and let my wife pick out whatever she wants or we'll just leave them on. 
but I'll go back and spray foam, you know, around the, uh, the door jam, you know, in time. But the door's turned out really well. I mean, there's a lot of videos out there on how to install a door. Um, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> oh man, here we go with straightforward again. I put about five screws going down this jam. So there's, um, there's one about four inches off the ground and there's one four inches below, from the top. And then there's one about maybe 18 inches, you know, up. And you, I think maybe six, so two in the cent, two off to the center right there. So maybe six, I think I put in each door. Or it might have been six in the French door, five in here, but just about the same for both. And then I really didn't need anything for the top, but I wanted to screw the jam into the header. So I threw the piece of ply up there that slid in perfectly and then used that so that I could screw the jam into the header. And that's just to give the door a little extra, little extra support when everybody's shutting it. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the door install. Um, not much to it. <laughs> uh, I'm excited to have them in. Yeah, I was tired of hearing the uh, house wrap flap back and forth, and it definitely um, cut down a little bit on the wind um, coming into the house, which is nice. But uh, we're gonna continue working on the mechanicals. Today I'm gonna finish installing the, uh, all the water distribution equipment downstairs, all the filters and the pump and the manifold for the PEX, all that good stuff, and I'll try and videotape that as well. I may go back and just do the PEX and the water distribution as one video. It sort of all ties together, so it would probably be pretty important to put that all together. Uh, but we'll see. I have no idea. Like I said, I'm way behind on videos, so I apologize. Thank you for checking out what I have put up. I know it's not super exciting and fun we'll get back to that stuff but we're just about to finish up all the mechanicals my hope is that in the next week i can sort of um, go through the punch list and make sure we're good start kind of testing the gas lines the water lines the drain lines that way i can schedule an inspection and if all goes well after inspection we can start closing some stuff up but as always man thank you guys for checking out the channel watching the videos uh, hopefully you're enjoying everything hopefully you're enjoying the weather getting a little bit nicer i sure am i think it's going to be 55 today which is like 100 degrees in regards to how it's been the last month or two so uh I hope you enjoy your day, and again, thanks for checking in. We will catch you on the next one. Take care. as I usually do, and I'll probably go back and walk you guys through some of the video afterwards and point some stuff out. I, uh, my dad and I did the jam extension on the French door. So guys, this is pretty much the lumber that's left over from building the house. There's certainly some odds and ends that I have to do, and it will all get used at some point in time, but as far as framing and you know all the um, bracing and all that stuff, this is pretty much what's left over. So I didn't do too bad. Not, not too much over and based on current lumber prices it's like seven million dollars worth of lumber i'm rich <laughs>